Okay, I threatened to do a section control video, and well, this is it. This is going to take a bit of explaining, but well, there you go. This is what's called the back buffer. Now, this is just a zoomed in view, in, and it just looks straight down. And so the section itself, this is a double section, it's basically sitting in the middle of this, and as we move, here as this moves, of course the image moves. And you can see if we take a take a snapshot of this area, for example, area in front of the the tool, we can see the areas of pixels that are mapped and those that aren't mapped. And there this line here, that's the boundary as it goes by. If we make these one color of green and the boundary another color and the headland another color, what we can do Let's turn this guy on. There you can see that as we're driving, we accumulate. So you can see it's like right there. A little higher. Right there is where the, the tool is. And so our point of interest is what's coming up. Because if we're trying to do a look ahead and anticipate turning the sections off and on, all we do, and this is a 500 by 500 pixel window, is we take as wide as the tool is, we take a snapshot of that picture or what's there, what's green, what's black. And then now we can use that to determine whether or not to turn the sections off. So if we whip around the corner here, you can see that the section shut off because it's applied. Now the look ahead sees this area ahead of it and knows that it isn't applied. So therefore it'll turn it back on. So that's the whole premise, is we can see it here, well, so can the computer. We take that area, and it's called the uh, read pixel buffer. We just go back and we read what's in OpenGL, and that becomes an array of, uh, of pixels. Then we can decide whether or not to turn it on, to turn it off, whether we're on a boundary line, whether we're on a headland, that sort of thing. So it's completely all done graphically just like that. Okay, so that's an important concept. Number one. Okay, so here we have that same two section tool. Now, if we are traveling at three and a half kilometers an hour, which is coincidentally one meter per second, and our look ahead forward is two seconds, then we should look forward two meters. So then this kind of becomes our, well, it, it is our area that we're looking at, and that's our read pixel buffer. So it's exactly if this tool is, say, four meters wide, and we're two seconds ahead, two seconds times one meter per second, seconds crowns cancel out. So this is two meters forward, right? And here's our tractor pulling the tool. What we're looking at is this two meter by four meter square and we're looking for pixels and we're looking for sections that are that applied area as they come up so as we look forward either if we want to turn it off we look for green encroaching into the little area but if we're sitting on all applied and out here is some some unapplied meaning it's black then we wait until we can go past this area that we've applied and once the black hits inside here, we just look for a, a black pixel, and then we turn it on. So all we're doing, looking for is, is it applied? And are the sections on? And do we need to turn them on? Or do we need to turn them off? And do we need to delay? And that sort of thing. So that's the basic principle of it. We're just looking for the pixels inside our read pixel buffer. So this is our read pixel buffer. All right. So now that's all fine and dandy. But suppose you're going around a corner, and according to, you know, this, this side is standing still, and you're traveling this way around. And you have your, you know, section of unapplied. This is unapplied here. And then we have our, we have our look ahead area. Well, you can see that if we kept it the same all the way across, that wouldn't make much sense, because this is going to touch. And this is a long ways away, so our distance away needs to kind of match the, the individual sections and the speed they're going. 
So what we do is we take what was our last position and what was this position, and we know how long it, it is between updates, and we have a distance over time, which becomes, of course, meters per second in our speed. So we, we do that for this point, we do that for this point, we do that for this point, and now we have a speed of these individual parts of the section. Now, if we only had one section, and we were turning really sharp, and the center was going backwards, or sorry, the center's standing still, and the front's going back and forth, well, you can't just average the two, because now your speed, if this is going two meters per second forward, and this one's going two meters per second backwards, our effective speed is zero. So now our look ahead is zero. Well, that doesn't work. So what you do have to do for each section is number one, determine the, the maximum amount of speed that you're moving and use that value. Of course, the outside of the boom goes faster. If this guy's going four meters per second and this guy is going two meters per second, the effective speed of this section is now four. So we look four meters ahead. Same with this one. This one is might be going negative one. And this might be going two. So then our look ahead would be two meters forward. And this is the way it used to be done before. Now you can see a bit of a problem here. This part of the, the uh, section is actually moving slightly backwards, or I suppose it was even standing still. What we really want is it to look like this. Let's draw it again. It's getting a little busy. So again, our, our tool is going around a corner. And here's our, here's our unapplied section. So what we want is a look ahead that kind of does this. Now up until now, how do you do this? How do you scan a buffer? It's a lot easier to start here and just read the pixels across, you know, just count from zero to 40 and then from 41 to, to 80 and just count them up. So, uh, you know, how do you start over here and then start over here and start, like that was always the hard part. And so that's what's changed in section control now is this, the, the line and the speeds match the actual tool position. So you really only have two, two speeds. You have this speed and this speed. Now, of course, you can't go below zero. So if it's going backwards, it goes from zero to, what did we say, four meters per second over here. Now what we do is instead of, because the array counts this way, what we do is now we count forwards. And all we do is we take this speed, suppose it's um, one meters per second, and this side is four meters per second. If we know these two positions, and of course it's conveniently on graph paper, if anyone remembers what the equation for slope is, it's this, it's rise over run. So what we do is we determine the slope of this. And once we've determined the slope of this point, and we know that we're, how wide was this? Four meters wide. One other important piece of information is scale. Now we have our pixel buffer and our tool is four meters wide. Now in order, one pixel represents 10 centimeters. And our tool is four meters wide, therefore we go from zero to 40 pixels is equal to four meters of tool. So we have our dimensions now. Now we have our four meter tool, and this side's going at four. So we have our rise over run. So now, based on halfway, we take 20 times our rise over run, gets us to two. So instead of going across, now we just go up till we get across to the, the slope of the line. And then we look for area this way. So in order to go from this point in the array to this point in the array, and remember the array is 40 wide, if this is position 11, then the next position we go to is 51, 91, 131. Sorry, 
Yeah, 131. So that's the positions in the array, because remember it goes from 0 to 40, 41 to 80, that sort of thing. We're going to count this way, but we count by the width of the tool, and then we go up. Now the advantage of this is it gives a much better gradient for when you're coming up to funky sort of boundaries. Or if this is standing still and there's this little jut out here, you don't want the thing coming on till that look ahead line actually touches that. You can imagine as you're driving, you know, first it's here, then it's here, then it comes on. The old way, when it was like this, it would see it right away and just turn on. But if we can kind of take that ideal slope, then we can do much more accurate control and determine exactly where that look ahead point is all the way across. Okay, so basic section control is about turning the sections off and on at the right time. Uh, it may seem obvious, but that's the tricky part. So if we go into the settings here, right now we have our turn ahead, turn on ahead time, like before you get to unapplied. We want to turn, start turning the boom on two seconds before we get to the unapplied. And then our turn off time, like to empty the boom, or like an air seeder where they're seeding in the hoses, we want to turn it off ahead by one second. Okay, so what does that mean? Now we're coming up to an unapplied area here, and our, our turn on time, that's what this green line is, as soon as that touches, and sees unapplied, we turn it on. Now you see it went from green to this dark, or this bright cyan color. If we look at the individual polygons that it draws, you can see that even though there's five sections, there's only one patch made across the whole section. Now you can start to see it turns green, and then it's all individual sections. Now that's important because you can imagine over the entire field if you had 16 sections and you had 16 patches every meter or two, it adds up to just a tremendous amount. So if there's no manual on or if there's no boundary in the way or if there's no, there's nothing in the way, then, uh, then make it a solid one. And that saves a lot of triangles, but it also does makes a lot of pain in the neck for programming because you can't control that single section <clears throat> to turn off individual sections. So you have to be able to turn it off. So you know that the red line here is that one second. So as soon as it sees in this area here, in this area, if it sees all applied, and that's our turn off time, then we can turn these off. If this guy can see turn this back off again. Now, if this guy can see anything unapplied, then turn it back on again. So here it turns off right away when this line, there, tick, tick, tick. And that gives us our one second turn off. So that's the basic premise. Now, as you can see, when you go around a corner, this travels slower than this side. So the look ahead has to be farther ahead. And same with the shutoff and that sort of thing. You have to compensate for the basic speed of the side of the boom. Now you can see now that line, it'll turn off while that's in the way. Now if we go around this corner here, you can see that now turn it on. One, two, there's our two seconds on. And same with that. And it's the same with off. That's different than this side, which is going to look way up here, turn it on, because our two seconds now gets to that point before it turns off. And see that? It'll turn that guy on. So it's really very speed dependent, and that's where that slope of the line is important. If each of these was a single block, and if this was a single block, you'd have to go by that speed, then it would be nowhere near as accurate. So that's what the last the latest delay in, in releasing version 4 is is to make this work a whole lot better and a whole lot smoother in terms of using a linear line using the slope and calculating all the way across what that look ahead will be. So here we will turn it off. See it should stay on 
until you get right to there. And there's our one second turn off. So that works really, really, really well. The other option is to, and you'll see that goes to zero. What a turn off delay does is it stays on for that one second, that extra bit of overlap. So here it'll turn on as soon as the green hits the unapplied and stay on until the boom sees no more applied, like here, and then stay on for our one second. So that's a delayed turn off as opposed to an, a look ahead turn off. So this is creating a headland. It's pretty simple. You can either set a distance, you can move things around, that sort of thing. That's another whole tutorial on its own. But uh, we'll move 30 meters in. We'll create our headland and accept that. Now this yellow line here is our headland. Okay, now headlands and section control and hydraulic lift. Hydraulic lift works very much the same as section control and looking ahead. Is any part of the look ahead or the tool or anything, is it inside the headland? And then we can set our tool look ahead. We'll set this for three seconds. Three seconds away from the boundary, we're gonna to start to lower the tool. And then once we're completely outside of the headland, then we're going to lift the tool again. So just moving ahead, section control off. Yeah, that's this purple line. And as soon as we hit there, now we lower the implement. So by the time you get there, then the thing is in the ground. It can start seeding or, or, or doing whatever it's going to do, till, whatever. So now we have three lines. We have our look ahead of the, of the, the hydraulic lift. We have our look ahead turn on and our look ahead turn off. So now we have three different sections and they all can slope and that sort of thing. And then as we drive out now, this guy doesn't matter because what matters is we want to stay in the ground until the very last point, tick, now he comes up. So that's what the headland is for. And even if we turn this on now, it shouldn't come on in the headland. Let's whip around here. So then as we approach this, lift, turn on, and then begin mapping inside of the headland area. So the mapping has to be disconnected from the section control. It used to be just the section control would turn on and the mapping would occur when the section was turned on. Now the two are no longer linked. So you can have, you can have section on and not have mapping. You can have mapping, but not the section on. So the, the two aren't you know, linked anymore. So here turning off, and as soon as the red line hits the yellow, that's our one second turn off. And then now we've come completely out, hydraulic comes back up again. Okay, so now let's put everything together. Right click on the steer control, hit play, and that turns on U-turn, auto steer, and headland if there is one, and the hydraulic control. And we'll turn on our section control. Speed up a little. So now it all happens all automatically. Section shut off, implement lifts up, you whip around the corner, I'll speed that up. I don't know if I should leave these lines on or not, they're actually kind of handy. I know they just used them for testing, but now as soon as that line hits the edge, tool goes down, Section control turns on, mapping begins. Voila, just like that.